Have you ever wondered where all your trash goes? Well, I have, and now after playing Robo Junkyard, I know exactly where it goes. Basically, it heads to the junkyard, and then robots sort it out manually to determine what piles it's supposed to go in. Now, these robots are objectively trying to push the trash in their piles into other players' piles, so that way their area looks the cleanest, and the person with all the leftover junk is the one that has to dump it off into whatever reservoir or large open area there is to place it, or of course, if they're a little more economical, economical they put it into some type of landfill. Regardless, so that's not the most important part of this game. The most important part of this game is making sure that your robot is the cleanliest in the junkyard and the way it works is it plays two to four players it takes about a half an hour to play and it's for ages 10 and up and you're going to be a robot or controlling one and having that robot basically get rid of junk push it on other players or just simply explode it from existence to not have to worry about it junk will be in different types and sizes and of course the lowest size junk will go on the bottom and the highest size will go on the top up to the point where it's going to blow up a pile and hopefully by the time all your trash is gone, you are the person remaining at the very end of the game, the first person to remove your hand. And if you can do that, you'll score points. And points are very important because if you can get six points in this game, you win. If you don't get six points, however, you can still play up until you can get one point unless you're the last robot with any junk left over in their hand. If that's the case, you get nothing. First to get it, six is the winner of the game, Robo Junkyard. Let's go ahead and show you the game. Welcome to the junkyard. Here is the Robo Junkyard, and in Robo Junkyard, you're going to be getting four robots, four robot decks, a sizable amount of credits, and the rule book for the game. Now, we got a separate note here to remind you that, whoops, the uh, video that explains how to play the game is, in fact, not three minutes. It's five and a half, a grave error. And, of course, the robots will have names based on Kickstarter backers for this project or campaign. Now, to begin the game for setup for Robot Junkyard, simply choose one of the four robots here, and they have different colors. You're going to have orange, you're going to have yellow, blue, and pink. Once you've chosen one of those robots, go ahead and take their robot card and place it somewhere on the side, as well as taking that robot deck into your hand. If you're just playing two players, you'll simply remove the other two robots that are not playing the game, such as maybe this red and pink one, and you'll just go ahead and use this yellow robot here. Put the credits to the side in a pool because you will be using them to win the game because to win the game you're going to need basically these cards to fill up and there's these six credit slots for each of the robots this is a fully detailed rule book as to how to play the game both front and back but i'm going to go ahead and teach you it right here so you won't need to look at that so we've got our robots we've got their decks now how do you set the game up well the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw four cards from a shuffled deck from there, you're going to choose one of those cards and put it into the collection. The collection is a set of cards that you can gather throughout the game as you're playing Robo Junkyard. Then you're going to set the other three cards aside. That will be your stack of cards. Then you're going to take the rest of the cards in the deck, select one of them, and place it into your little stack area here. This is where you're going to be taking these when this hand of cards runs out. The rest of these cards will be your hand for this specific round. And the same will be said for this deck as well. Draw four, choose one of them, set it aside. We'll go with this one here. And then, of course, put this in your pile, as well as one card from here and place it here and then you've got your hand of cards to begin the game as well. Now that you're ready to begin the game, go ahead and select a player who has most recently dug in the trash. Throughout trash? I don't know. Something to do with trash. And then they're going to begin. There's going to be a pile and there's going to be right here in the middle where you'll be placing cards down and basically trying to uh, get rid of all the cards in your hand because if you can do that, you'll be taking this stack into your hand and if you can get rid of those as well, you're going to win the round. These cards here can be gathered but only when cards, when you play them, say so. So we'll start with this blue robot here, and as you can see, there's numbers 1 all the way to 10. You can play any number you want to begin the stack, but after that you have to play numbers that are higher than, or sometimes equal to, the numbers that are in front here on the top of the pile. Like, for instance, if I wanted to, I could play this 2 here, and the 2 says that you can play on a 2, and if there are 3 or more 2s the, uh, on the top of the pile, you can blow up that pile. Additionally, you can play the same number more than once. So I can play both of these twos here. And that would end my turn if I did not or need, did not need to use this ability. And in fact, I didn't need to use it yet. Then it goes on to this player's turn here. If this player had a two, it would be a great time because the stack would get blown up. And whenever stacks get blown up, you'll move that stack aside to a discard pile. And then the person who blew it up will get to take an extra turn. 
So in this case, maybe I'll go ahead and play a three. And because a three is higher than a two, I'll go ahead and uh, read this out. And it says after playing, you'll skip the next player's turn, which means you'll skip this player's turn. And then I can go ahead and play something else. Maybe this four here. And the four says that when this card is on the top of the stack, the active player must play a lower value card. So in this case, if I had a lower value card like this one, I can play it. If I didn't, however, if I didn't have a card that could be placed on top of the stack here, I will draw all of the cards into my hand and the player to my left is the player who's going to get to take their turn, which basically means the player who played last will take their turn again. Luckily I have this one though, so I'll play it there. After playing, if this isn't the only card in the pile, if, uh, if this isn't the only card in the pile, you may choose an opponent who must reveal their hand. So it's not the only card in the pile here. So this player will then reveal their hand to you and then play will pass. And this guy is gonna go over here and go, hmm, I'll go ahead and play this. I don't know, let's play a six. After playing, you may swap a card in your hand with a card in the collection. And this is the collection over here. Maybe I didn't want, I don't know, this seven here. I could swap it with the card I placed in, in the collection or somebody else's card and then the play would pass. And that's the idea of the game. It's gonna keep going back and forth till eventually somebody runs out of cards in their hand and then they're gonna draw the cards from their little pool over here. To which case, if that empties as well, the game is going to give that person two credits. And the game will keep going until only one player has cards left in their hand. In a two player game, that would basically end the round right here and he would score nothing. But if it was a three player game and there was a red player, this player would score one provided he was the second to last player to place his last card and the red player would get nothing. From there, you're going to rinse and repeat the round and play again up until somebody gathers six credits. And the first person to gather those six credits and cover his robot board is the winner of the game, Robo Junkyard. Pretty simple, right? Let's come up and talk about it. Before we go and take out the trash for Robo Junkyard, let's go ahead and talk about a couple caveats. One of them being the one that I discussed previously just a little bit, that you can play multiple of the same cards. So if you have three threes, you can play all three of those, but you're only gonna get to do the ability once. So that's the same thing as these twos here, but twos have a special ability that will let you blow up the pile whenever uh, you get three of them in a row. Blowing up a pile is very important because it'll let you take an extra turn and it's a good way to refresh the stack. However, drawing cards is a bad way of playing the game. And that happens with maybe I play a five and all the cards in your hand are a six or greater. Well, then uh, all the cards are in your hand are a four or less, except for the zero, which you can play at any time that you want. Uh, then you're gonna have to draw that stack up. So basically whenever you can't play a card, draw the stack. You don't wanna draw the stack of cards because if you do that, you're going to regret it because the player before you will get to take an extra turn for messing you up and you're gonna have to try and continue to place down cards and catch up in the game, which is something that can happen if you're unlucky in the game. Uh, then we have special abilities. Each of the robots has their own unique special card with a special ability. Like this one here, it has a little star on it and it says after playing this card, for each player, you may put one other card from the pile into their hand. So the pile there, once you place this card down, you can look through the pile and give maybe this player a bad card and this player another bad card. Bad cards are usually ones that they are not going to be able to play, or based on what has already been played, things that are hard to play or that don't affect you in any way, shape, or form. So that is a good card to have. When you draw a stack up, you'll get every single card from that stack, except for cards that have a unique special ability with the little star on them. Those are simply removed. Once these are played, that's it for them but otherwise that's pretty much all you need to know about robo junkyard what do i think about the game well this is a gateway game this is something that you jump into right after uno if you understand the basics of uno and you've played a family game like uno before robo junkyard is not a far leap uh, to play you're going to be able to understand the game fairly quickly the game is played in rounds the game is fairly quick and you play round after round without any trouble. The setup of the game is rather easy too. Draw four, put one down, put the rest of the three in a stack, draw the rest of your hand and put one into your stack and you're ready to go. Next round, begin. First player to six is the winner. Zero all the way to 10, playing cards that are higher than the previous card played unless the card says otherwise. The game has a lot of unique little aspects too. There's the unique robot powers, which I especially enjoy, and they all do and serve their own unique functions and are all fun to play as well. 
Uh, the fact that the game ends rather quickly is nice because it makes it not only a gateway game, but something you can segue into another game if you want to take a little bit of a break. The game is combative, combative but not too aggressive to the point where you're getting people angry when they have to draw the stack up or if they lose a round because even if you get unlucky one round, you can still win the next couple rounds. And overall, strategy is the most important thing in this game. Remembering what other players played, choosing to play cards based on what they played, and emptying your hand first is the most important thing in the game. The artwork is cute, it reminds me of a couple of these other like Mechanica style games, and the theme is funny as well, moving around trash and throwing it into other people's faces, as well as exploding the trash to then create a new stack which will then allow you to get rid of cards and or trash. It functions very well and it makes sense as you're playing the game. I thoroughly enjoyed this game. I think for people who enjoy games that involve Uno or other simple basic gateway style games that want a little bit of something extra, a little bit of something different in their playgroup as well as a quick game, small, doesn't take as long as games like Uno where they're simply going to have a million cards in hand. This one the round is going to end and eventually there's nothing you can do about it. It's just going to trigger the end but you're going to be able to play again and again. It's what I can easily see being played again. Now with when it comes to the negative aspect of this game, like I said some rounds you're just going to get unlucky and you might have to draw the stack over and over again. That can happen but sometimes drawing that stack will help you because cards in your hand will allow you to play them and mess up your opponents and sometimes you can at least choose, even if you can't win yourself, who will actually take the prize, uh, the coveted two credits as opposed to the single one credit, which are the victory points in the game. Uh, that's pretty much it. I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this game because I really enjoyed it. It's rather quick, it's rather simple. If you like gateway games that are quick, simple, fun, family-friendly games, then Robo Junkyard is one I would suggest taking a look at on Kickstarter with the link down below. Are you interested in this game? If you are, let me know down below in the comments, or if not, why not? Let me know as well. I'm actually curious to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, we look forward to cleaning up the trash with you next time.